Welcome back. We're here today, and we've got a special guest. This is Seth Bickus. Seth, it's wonderful to have you here today. Yep, wonderful to be here. Thanks for having me. Deborah. You're welcome. Now, you do something that I just think is amazing. I love what it is. And, and what is that? I'm a glass blower of sorts. You know, focus on lamp working, borosilicate glass, and been learning for 13 years now. Oh my goodness. Now you don't just learn here from people. You go to different places and learn from other yeah. people that do this artwork. I try to travel at least once a year to different, uh, some kind of conference or some kind of you know, training event. And then I also collaborate with friends in the you know, region and get to work and learn their techniques and put our styles together and you know, see what we can come up with. It's well, that fun. we were talking about that earlier, the collaboration that you do. And you've got one here. This little guy, these are like paperweights or balls or whatever, but they're just really cool. This little guy actually has a crab inside of it. Yep. And yeah. he's not just a crab, he's made out of glass, right? He's made out of glass and was made by a wonderful artist named Michael Winnipico out of uh, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, or Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania. And it's actually a three way collaboration. The back side has a piece by another artist out of New York. And um, it took the three of us, you know, 40 years of experience to put that together. Oh, and my Michael's goodness. Michael's been doing it for over 20 years, and, uh, and the person on the back has been doing it for nearly 20 years. And my time as well, so. Oh, yeah. that's so cool. And, and you do these, and you sell all of them, obviously. Sometimes, yeah. Try to. You well, know, yes. It's the goal to make it all keep going, you know. And, of course, but, this year we haven't had very many shows to go to. Yeah, I've done one. Oh, my you know, this goodness. this t-shirt is actually from the one show that I've been able to do this year. And it's Marble a, yeah, Crazy. Marble Crazy in Bonner Springs, Kansas, and is uh, one of the longest running uh, marble shows, you know, in the country. They're, um, I don't know, what's this, 20 The 20th years? annual? 20th annual. Yeah. yeah. That's a long time. Yeah. Now, what do, you, what do you find so, what made you decide to do this? What do you find so interesting that you wanted to learn how to be an artist with glass. I kind of got struck by the fire. You know, I saw a guy at a renaissance fair making a little figurine and seemed like something that was could be done, you know, with a limited amount of equipment and space and uh, I ended up buying a torch and just got hooked from there. Oh my. And this is not inexpensive either. There's, a, no. you know, when you go to buy your glass, what would the what would the glass cost? Just the glass to put uh, into Clear this? glass is about five bucks a pound, you know, when right. you buy in bulk. And then colored glass varies from $40 a pound to almost 200 on some of the specialty glasses. Wow. And what makes it even harder than that is a lot of the glasses have such a following and have so much hype behind them that you can't get them. You know, once they become available, they sell out in 15 minutes. You know, oh, I, wow. I just tried to buy a couple pounds of uh, special white yesterday and... Um, yeah, within 15 minutes it was sold out. And you didn't get it? I didn't get it. Oh. No. And it's a $120 a pound. Oh my goodness. No. Well now with all this stuff that you do, you actually make goblets. Yep. And, and you custom them I sometimes. Do custom. Sure, certainly. So with these goblets, you can make these for either, is it just for a wedding or can it be for, like just for my kitchen? I find weddings, uh, people for gifts for weddings is a big part of uh, the goblets and then I also feel people that um, you know like enjoying a uh, you know, nice glass of wine or whiskey or beer out of a fancy cup you know um, there's been a big movement in the beer scene to, um, to having like kind of fruity beers that are way different than what we think of when we think of beer right. and uh, they you know the Instagram the online craze is kind of showing off your fancy beer in a fancy glass uh, so it's really driven a lot of my friends' sales. Um, so it's something I want to learn to do. And cups are an extreme measure of practice and skill. Right. Uh, to put them together, to, to size them right, to you know, have a, everything work out semi-even and straight is, uh, takes a lot of practice. So I've got boxes and boxes of wonky tops that I'll <laughs> never make into a cup. You know? Oh my. Uh, now can you, can you reuse any of that? Technically, sure. But it's like once you put the time and making a nice stem and nice you know goblet foot and everything, why would you want to put a wonky top on it? Well, and my aesthetic is I, I like that clean, crisp. It looks you know yeah. professionally made. Uh, that's just kind of how I. Why well, I mean, you would never know that you I like this one. This one's so straight, 
there is no way there's a it's slanted in any way right. so you you're very particular thank you thank you yeah but, that uh, that piece of prep uh, sat on my bench for about six months as a you know just a piece of tubing with the color application on it and it took me about that long to build up the energy to be able to you know, work it and right. think I cannot screw it up. Right. You, you put enough thought through the process, yeah. and by the time you did it, you had exactly what you wanted to do in your mind. Yeah. So, now that's really cool. Now, this piece in the center is totally different than what I've ever seen you do. Yeah. So, explain a little bit about this piece. Uh, so, it's kind of an unfunctional vase, and it was um, just working with uh, hollow shapes, and then I uh, wanted to practice making like a root or a branch type uh, structure. Oh, yeah. So I made that, that at the bottom. Um, so I put that at the bottom and that's where the piece really started and then I didn't know what to do with that. So I made this top and it kind of sat on my bench also for a while and then I finally, you know, envisioned it coming together with a marble and and it, it you know, just came out pretty well, I feel like. It did. Pretty now it does have a hole in it. It actually it a hole, can put so one you could flower. Put one flower, one you know, flower. Or, or a feather or, you know, I mean, there's definitely Something things you could it. put in it. Cleaning it, I don't know, you know. Uh, <laughs> that would be, you have to be careful. Gotta be careful. But now, then I noticed one thing after it had sat here for quite a while. Now, you guys, I don't, you, I don't know if you can see this. We're going to get close up on it in a few minutes. But I had looked at this for quite a while after he got here, and I finally noticed in the marble, there's sparkles. Yeah, so almost called, like uh, a star. It's called dichroic glass, and it was developed yeah. for NASA as a heat shield. And it can take the heat from the flame, yes. but it can't take the atmosphere of the flame. So you've got to work it really carefully and get it uh, encased in glass before it burns out. And then even encased in glass, if you use the wrong type of flame right. or get it too hot, it'll burn. And my technical term for that is that beautiful sparkle turns to scuzz. Oh! Yeah. yeah. So that so can, that can be well. messed up real quick. Yes. Yeah, that's a lot. Flame chemistry is a lot to do with um, everything, you know, different colors kind of react differently. Um, a lot of these kind of holographic colors are made with gold and silver. Right. And that's really particular to the flame chemistry. You know, too much propane, too much oxygen affects it one way or the other. Uh, and then getting it, any of it too hot can, can kind of muddy the colors. And so it's, it's, there's a lot to learn. It's a lot of process of, you know, figuring it out, screwing it up and trying again. Well, yeah, you learn you learn from your mistakes. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> well, I think you have. <laughs> These are, the air stuff's always cool. I always like it. But now, just tell them just a little bit of how long does it take you to make a marble? So these big marbles uh, with multiple sections and such, uh, this one where you can see the layers in there, are going to be a half a day process of assembling and then a lot of times I'll, I'll make the pieces beforehand and then I can kind of see how they're going to go together, see what right. matches. Um, so those can take a couple of hours individually too. So it's kind of a, it's a pretty long process to build up something. With so it's a few days things. because each piece is a different, <clears throat> if it's a different day or days. Right, right. So, wow. And then some of the simpler marbles, you know, this is a good example of that, is uh, just a smaller vortex. And that's something that I can do in a two or three hours, you know. So that kind of is a, uh, starting from a blank slate and right. then finishing it. That you know. That and you pretty. like doing the vortex. I like the that's vortex. The vortexes is. really draw a lot of attention. You know, it's something that, that mm -hmm. defying what your brain thinks, and that just really has been. It, it was the first marble I saw that I would that I was reaching for my pocket on and. Trying to buy, I didn't understand it was a $700 collectible Kevin O'Grady marble, but um, yeah, I thought I could buy it with 200 bucks, and which was a lot of money for me as a 22-year-old kid. Yes. But I wanted it, you know, and I didn't get it. Oh. Someday, someday I will. But some days already here, you're making what you wanted. Sure, sure. So it's, it's not, it's not one of his. I know. You know? It's yeah. not one of his, but you do an amazing job. Thank those, you. those look really wonderful, and. Every time I see them, I just wonder how long did it take you to do that. So yeah, that's a big question. I guess how long, and then um, how hot glass softens, or this type of glass softens at fifteen hundred, and at twenty three hundred, it moves like honey. Um, so there's, you know, it, it can happen fast once you get the heat there. Yeah, you know, shaping and changing it, and 
It's the trapping the detail is what takes the time. Right, I, I can see. And you also make jewelry too, don't you? Yeah, I do a lot of um, I do a lot of pendants. I do um, memorial glass is something that's really carried me through this time of COVID. Um, people wanting to memorialize their loved ones and their, oh, their pets yeah. and such. Yeah. So that's been something that's uh, kind of kept me busy and and kept me going. And it's um, a really good way to memorialize somebody you cared about. Yes. Um, so I feel something gives me lots of sense of pride. You know, special. Something uh, yeah. really special. And, and from the first ones I made, you know, I was that person really connected with what I did, and and that just made it, you know, feel really, really yes. connected. Made them feel better. Made them feel better. Um, a lady's able to take her mom everywhere she goes now. Yeah. And has for over ten years. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Now with with all this stuff that you're doing, you actually have a Facebook page. Yep. Yeah. And that is what? Made with fire. Um, all spelled out and and then I do a lot on my personal page too, just under Seth Vickis. Right. But the, the one with Seth that's called Made with Fire, that's where you put a lot of the pictures of put, the yeah. items that you create. Yes, yep, certainly. Yes. And, uh, and on my Instagram too, which is right. at Seth Vickis. Oh my goodness. Now, a lot of people don't know, what does your shop look like? A this mess. You know? <laughs> But uh, you know where everything is. Certainly, certainly. And I have actually worked on um, organizing that more here in the last few months. Um, right. Yeah, so uh, I you got to use a ventilation system. It's really important to have fresh air. Right. And then I have to use um, uh, oxygen and propane. Right. Um, so anyone to store that, store that pro properly, which is outside of the building, you know, it's one of the safest ways to do it. Um, and then I have a small, you know, tabletop size kiln that I use to put the pieces in and cool them off after I finish making them. So it's a controlled environment. Right. Um, and the kneeling temperature for this type of glass is about 1,050 degrees. So it's, wow. it's pretty hot sitting there on the bench, you know. So what happens if this cools off too fast? Um, it, any internal stress in there will, will come out and it'll, it can crack, it can break it. Uh, these bigger items, since they're so thick, you know, it takes a long time for that heat to leave right. or get in the piece. So the bigger marbles take a 10, 12 hour um, process of cooling them off. And that doesn't even get it to room temperature. That just gets it down to 600 from the 1050. But it's less likely to crack it. But it's point. way less likely to crack. You're heating up all the molecules, making them happy, making them all alive. Right. Oh my gosh. Well, is there anything we need to tell everybody that I haven't asked you that you think they might want to know is there anything interesting or unusual about what you do. Um, yeah, uh, I think any form that you get to take at the time and practice at and to to become skilled at is worth the effort. You know, and it's been something that's just given me a uh, a breath of life and something I can have respect right. for myself in and something that I can you know really have a lot of belief. Now, do you ever take somebody? along with you into your shop and teach them anything? Do you I have taken a few a few friends and had a few people come in and do a little bit of work and it, it's tough because it's such a commitment of time and it money is. and a lot of people just don't have that time and, and funds available. You right. know? Um, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working on it, trying to find a, the right apprentice at the right time. And, uh, a big thing that happens is you teach somebody kind of your styles and then they take that and run it and they sell to your customers, you know. And that's not you gotta good. Be, you got to yeah. be kind of careful who you take in and what you show everybody. Right. But yeah, I tried to share a lot of it. When we were doing collaborations with other more established artists, you know, we tried to share a lot of information right. and, and try to help each other along and because we all pick up different things from different people and, and the more that we can spread that around, the better we can be at it. This is just amazing. I, I watch your page all the time just to see what you come up with that's different than I've seen before. But I don't know, do you ever allow people to come out and, and watch you make anything just to watch the process? I do it sometimes, you know, when there's a custom order involved or something or, you know, somebody wants to kind of see it and experience it and um, I definitely buy appointments, you know, it's, that's happened, you know, it will continue to happen. I will tell you all something, it's worth the trip. If he has the time and you call him, if you go out there and watch what he does, it's worth the time. It's amazing what you do to manipulate that glass to come up with these designs so yeah it's 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 got me hooked for you know, 13 over 13 years now this is so, your passion yeah this definitely is my passion and it's been my full-time business for four years now right. and um, 
it's uh, it's pretty pretty impressive to be able to create something that people you know and like and do what you love and, and do what I love and and get to travel and you know yeah it's been good my income has been pretty you know low from it once I take all the expenses out but I'm squeaking by oh well, that's you know, okay that's what matters <laughs> as long as you're making it and you're happy making that's the important I enjoy myself most of the time and yeah. Well, this is great, Seth. Well, I'm so glad you came in with us. We're going to try to have you back again soon, and thank you. We may, uh, we may pop back out again. And I'd love to have you guys out again. Yeah, we really we enjoyed day. that the last yeah. time we were there. So, yeah. I it it just amazes me. There's something we didn't cover, is that you wear special glasses when you're doing oh, this, certainly. because things don't show up when you're using your normal eyesight. Yeah, yeah. They, well, it's so hot. You've got to protect your eyes from the UV and the and the radiation coming off of the hot glass. And then there's a uh, chemical reaction that happens in the glass and the flame, and it puts off what's called the sodium flare. So there's a special lens that takes out that sodium flare, and you're able to see into the flame and see what the glass is actually doing. Right. Yeah. yeah that that's I found that very interesting that you could put those on and then you could just really see what was going on in your hands. Not just the big glare. Not so. just the big glare. Yeah. Well, it's a big fireball. We may have to. We may have to just come out soon and just show them some of the process right. that you do. I'd we'll just it. do a little yeah. story about that. So. Let's do it. Okay, we'll do it. Right. Well, guys, we greatly appreciate our sponsors that make all this possible, and we especially thank you for watching.